So I wanted to take a look at a different type of problem using the information about isotopes and the average atomic mass um, that's a little different from what we've been doing. Um, so we have a problem here. We have the two known naturally occurring isotopes of chlorine, chlorine 35 and 37. Uh, their masses are given, and the average atomic mass, which we can always look up on the periodic table, is also given to us. And from this information, we're supposed to calculate the percent relative abundance of each isotope. You remember that what we've been using so far was this formula, that we take the mass of the first isotope, we multiply it by its percent abundance, and then we add it to the product of the second isotope's mass multiplied by its percent abundance, and we get the average mass. Well now, what we know are the two masses and the average mass. What we don't know now are the percents, and that's what we're going to have to try to find. Since we know the numbers, the mass numbers, we can use some variable expressions to represent the percents. Now, with two isotopes, this is really easy, because, and we're only going to ever do two isotopes. Um, it's very difficult to do with more than two. But uh, when you have two isotopes, you know that the sum of the two percentages, the percentage of mass 1 plus the percentage of mass 2, uh, so we take this percent here and this percent here and we add them together and we get 100%. If we work in decimals, it's even easier. Uh, the 100% in decimals is 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two variable expressions for the two percentages. Okay, so substituting in the masses and a variable expression for the two percents. I use P to represent one percentage. It doesn't really matter which one you choose to be P, but what's important is that the second one is going to be 1 minus P. Now why 1 minus P? Well, if I add P and 1 minus P together, I get 1. 1 in decimal form is equivalent to 100 percent. So, I have now a simple algebra type problem that I can do simply by simplifying terms. I'm going to use the FOIL method uh, to multiply 36.959 times both 1 and by negative P here. And I'm going to set that equal to my average, which is right here. Expanding out, we've got 34.9689P. And then we distributed, so we have 36.9659 minus 36.9659P. And that's still equal to our average mass. So, what do we have to do now? We've got to combine like terms. We've got a negative there, and we've got a positive there, and the negative is bigger in size, absolute value, than the positive. The other thing we have to do is we've got to move this over to this side of the equation by subtracting. Combining like terms, we get negative 1.997p is equal to negative 1.5129. This is good that both sides are negative because we want p to be a positive number because there's no such thing as negative percentages. So finishing up the math, we divide both sides by negative 1.997, and we get p is equal to 0.7576, which, remember, it's a percentage, so that's just 75.76%, and that's chlorine 35. We refer, referred p to the 35 mass um, way back up here. And then that means that 1 minus p here is 0.2424, and that's 24.24%. .24 and that's Cl37 because the 1 minus P referred to chlorine 37. So those would be your answers. That's how you get them. And you're going to be doing the same thing the next time you do the lab when you do the lab with the pennies. So take a look at this video again. Rewind, pause, take notes if you need to. Uh, but make sure you know how to do this when you get into class the next time.